the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Amen. Hey, everybody. God bless you. I'm back again. And I, I'm going to still remind you, do you love yourself? Because the whole purpose there is the great two great commandments. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, all thy strength, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. And the question I had in the last segment is, do you love yourself? Do you? Do you love yourself? And if you don't love yourself, then we can understand why you hate other people. Because you hate yourself. You know, I saw a bit, I think it was a, uh, a video I heard the guy was giving a quote. And I'm gonna see if I can quote it. I, I think I got at least a content of it. He said that this particular quote has changed his life on how he relaxed and view the world, react to others, deal with others, and uh, deal with the world. <laughs> what he said is that your perception of me is really a reflection of yourself. And my reaction to you is an awareness of me. Ha! I don't, now, some people say, what's that? That's the kind of deep. Well, the deep part is this. Is the fact is that a lot of cases, when how people perceive you, kind of goes back to loving they with ourselves. That's a reflection of how they see themselves. Hmm? Love, love your neighbors yourself. And how people treat you is a reflection of themselves. Think about it. And then how you react to them is an awareness of yourself. And now you got to dress, okay, my reactions should be based on my awareness of who I am. Meaning, even I don't care how you perceive me because it's not how you perceive me. It's how I perceive myself. How I love myself, right? So, but if they don't love themselves, you can see how they can react towards you. You know there's people that's really angry uh, about themselves. Uh, mad at themselves, mad about life, to can't unwalk around unforgiveness, and they just don't care, <laughs> you know? Uh, but the question is, how do you respond to their perception about you? And we know we have, we can see sometimes, people sometimes let you know what they think of you. Or they, either by words or deeds, of how they think of you. But the question is, their reflection is not, their perception is only, ref I think about it, man, that's deep, really, you gotta think about that. When somebody act all foolish, stupid, or whatever towards you, you need to understand that's a reflection of themselves. They don't like themselves, so you know they don't like you. They don't trust themselves, so you know they don't trust you. You see what I'm saying? Love the neighbor, love your neighbor as thyself. <laughs> and sometimes you got people who don't love themselves. And that's probably what we deal with. A lot of people don't love themselves. They don't like themselves. And therefore, you get wrapped up and caught up in their issues. And I like the response of saying is my reaction should be my awareness of who I am. Well, like, what's important about the awareness of who you are? Because if you know who you are, it doesn't matter what somebody else perceives you to be. It doesn't matter what somebody's trying to project on you. I'm a child of God. I'm a joint out with Christ Jesus. I'm more than come to Christ Jesus loves me. If God before me, who can be against me? What I'm saying is, it does not matter what people think of you. It doesn't matter what you think of yourself. And who God said you are. That's an important thing too. Those of you who don't know Christ, that's fine. You, you, you think, I don't know what you think of yourself. But I'm telling you, for those that are believers, God already told who you are. You are a child of God. You are a joint heir with Christ Jesus. You are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Huh? He made you a king and a royal priesthood. You 
are somebody in Christ. You are heir to the covenant of promise in Christ Jesus. See, somebody, see, you know, think about when you talk about racism and all that other stuff. All that is because people want to give you a label that God already has given you. Ooh, come on now. God already gave you a label. God already told you who you are. Somebody sit there and say, because, no, no, no. Somebody, you know, we look at some of the, the ignorance of people who have used in the Bible to try to put and curse other people. You know, talk about somebody talking about the curse of Ham. You got the curse of Ham. Where in the Bible do you find Ham cursed? Where? Do we need to go look at it? Do we need to go see? Where, where, where was it with Cain? Not Cain, Cana was the one, his son of son of Ham. Where was where was he? Uh, curse. I, I, I mean, don't you think that's important <laughs> for us? If you if you sit there and live this 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 saying about the curse that Ham was cursed and Ham name reflects the dog race, that the dog race was cursed because of the acts of Ham. And it, then it got you ask yourself, what did Ham do? To see his father's nakedness is implied that he saw something that was disgraceful. He shouldn't be, so you think he would be cursed for something that somebody must have done? That was disgraceful to see his father's nakedness. Nakedness is known to seeing that there's some type of, there's some type of sexual act we witness. And, and he shouldn't have seen that. But it wasn't that he was participating in it. And then when they actually sit there and said the, uh, after the, after the, uh, the flood, uh, they didn't they did sit there <laughs> and say that, that uh, Ham, did, did you know that? That Ham wasn't cursed for anything. Uh, <laughs> if, if I'm, I'm concerned. The scriptures are very clear. You, if you didn't know that, uh, let me see. The flood society. Let me see here. Uh, that's the question. Do you love yourself? Uh, and when you get there, uh, you really do need to to understand who you are in Christ Jesus. And you know, you get that from the Bible. You just read it, you know, and read it for yourself. Don't don't go by what people say because just like I'm sitting there trying to find the scripture to, to show about Ham, you know, you, you got to read it. You can't be talking to people trying to read the same time, right? So you really can't uh, find it that way. So I'm, I'm going to have to let that go. I do want to go into Romans. Uh, at the end, close out with you on this in Romans. Uh, no, it was John, John 8. I wanted to, to cover real quick. And there was the, the thing about knowing the truth, and the truth will make you free. You know? Uh, here's the, uh, I'm going to share it with you right quick, and then we'll close out. Because I don't want over my 10 minutes. I tried to do 10 minutes, but I, I get it. I get it right. It says right here, the truth will set you free. Then Jesus said unto those Jews who believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you shall be my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How says thou, you shall be made free? It's kind of interesting to put him to make that statement. Then it was under the Roman uh, Empire, controlled by the Romans. And he said they don't be the bondage. They, they write in bondage right there. You know? They was in bondage 400 years in Egypt. What, what bondage they're talking about? You, you current, they currently in bondage by the Roman Empire. They said they ain't never been in bondage. And he really wasn't talking about the bondage of, of the flesh, but he's talking about the sin. Father, I'm sorry. Jesus answered and said, The very, very last saying to you, 
whosoever committeth sin, there it is, <laughs> is a servant, servant of what? Sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. ever. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Free from what? Sin. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my words has no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my Father, and you do that which you have seen with your Father. Hmm? Think about that. That, that's, that's, that's really the importance of understanding that uh, the truth about who you are in Christ Jesus makes you free. The truth about who you are in Christ Jesus makes you free. And the freedom we're talking about is the bondage of sin. Because sin has a, you know, in Romans it said, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. In my flesh there is sin. Huh? But in my spirit, I'm in Christ Jesus. And I have the Holy Spirit in me. That's who you have in you. He's not saying you, you know, one of the things that tell about love yourself is understand you got some work to be done. So do I. But I have the grace and mercy of him to allow me to do it. Amen? All right. So I just want you to understand, do you love yourself? That, that's probably the biggest question and you probably didn't understand. Look at everybody that is so hate and ask yourself, look at them. Why do they treat you a certain way? Because that's a reflection. They're reflecting what they think of themselves. On you. That's very important. I think that's cool. All right. I'll sit there and put, see if I can put that quote on, this, on the screen as well. Amen. All right. God bless you. And I will get with you later. I might even. Uh, Edit the tape so that we go and show you about that curse of hell. Amen. All right. God bless you. I'll check you later. Bye bye.